Bode Rabbonim, honorees, members, Misaskim of Hevri Kadisha, or Gomle Chesed, Chesed Shalemis, and last but not least, Mr. Ed Kolkstein. Rabbi Elliot Feldman and Mr. Kalman Lowenthal, who made this evening possible and invited me tonight for this unusual zechus. Chesed is the very essence of the purpose of creation. It's one of the amudim upon which the world stands. Olam chesed yibone, the chavetz chayim, in avas chesed, says that the ribone shalom created the human so that every person is constantly in need of chesed so that the world is really a laboratory. The world is really a place where each and every one of us can exercise our ability to give, our ability to assist, and to do for others. There are many drushes that have been given as to why Zion Adar, whether it's Adar Aleph or Adar Beis, is the day that is most often chosen by Chavis Kadisha. We heard there are other days. But I think Pashit, the simple pshat, is that the mitzvah of chesed in the Torah is an expression of Allah bidrachov. Zayin Adar was the day on which Moshe Rabbeinu was Born and Moshe Rabbeinu was Nifter. And on that day, Vayikbar Oyser Bagai, the Ribbon Shalom was Mikaber Moshe Rabbeinu. And therefore, that is the day that we chose to make the point, to emphasize, to recognize that the work that we do is really the ultimate expression of a halachta bedrachov. A halachta bedrachov, dveikus b'Hashem is another mitzvah, v'aisidbak is also through emulating the mitos of the Ribbon Shalom. And so we are blessed to have an assembly such as this of people who are osek in this mitzvah b'amunah, with Mesira Snefesh, to have so many people come together is in itself a tremendous chizuk and a tremendous reason to get together and to, and to create a sutta, to recognize who we are. Ashreinu matov chalkeinu, that we've been zolcha to perform this very special mitzvah. Chesed, because it is an expression of v'halachta bedrachov, is very unique. We say every morning, Elu dvarim she'ein lohem shir, hapeya v'habikurim v'arayin gemilas chasodim. Gemilas chasodim is something that has no shear. For us, as members of a Hever Kadisha, we think in terms of the Mesiras Nefesh that we have on an Erev Shabbos, on an Erev Yantif. I was just speaking before to someone who was reminding himself of a story of someone, Nebuch, 
who took their life and fell in a place where there were stones. I myself literally had flashbacks of an exact same situation where we spent hours on the roof of some building collecting specks of dam, cleaning stones, filling bags that we couldn't clean. Mesiris Nefesh, for a little bit of covet or Adam, a little bit more covered and to do a mitzvah b'shleimus, to do it with diktuk. Chavr Kadisha, in the fact that we don't know when it will be, we can never make a schedule. You never know. Chazal tell us that the mitzvah, of, the tefillah of mincha is more mekubal, has a better chance of being answered because it's a time that is not kavua. A person is Torah by Sokov. So therefore, we have a, a greater chance. It's a more powerful tefillah. This chesed that we do is a chesed on an unusual level. There's diktuk and there's mesiris nefesh in many, many ways. I was reminded again tonight by Robert Malevsky who told me reminded me that I was in Memphis and I told over, not so much a story, but a fact. When Pan Am flight, when the Pan Am flight went down over Lockerbie, there were over 100 fatalities. Among them were 16 Jews. I believe at the end, the total number of people who were identified positively was, I believe, in the low 30s. This so was before DNA. And people were basically buried in mass graves. They didn't know where to bury them or how to bury them. The Hever Kadisha from Manchester, from Eretz Yisrael, from different parts of Europe came. Every single Jew was identified in Het Kuris Yisrael. Days of work, tedious work. Others could have spent the time, but only Klal Yisrael was there because we are, we have that special midah of being Gaimle Chasadim. And that chesed is very much a part of our fabric. It's a matana. We are, by definition, in our makeup, in our very genes, we have the Mida of Chesed, the Mida of Rachmanus. And we exercise it in many ways, but this is one very special way. There's an Afgamina Chazal tell us between Chesed and Rachamim. Both are Midas of Klal Yisrael. Rachamim is when something evokes within us a feeling of wanting to help. There's a need. There's someone knocking at our door and comes and asks and tells us a story that's a story of pain, a story of need. We see someone that has pain Someone reaches out to us, there's Rachmanus. Rebbeinu Shlalem is a Rachman. And we are Rachmanim. Chesed is a little different. Chesed is when we reach out because we within us have a need to give. Even when there are perhaps others that will do it, it'll get done, or there's no one even that asks for it but we know that it's necessary to be done and we'll be there to do it. And we have a need to do it. The Rebbeinu Shalolam is created a world of chesed. There was no need. It was the midah of wanting to do good, of wanting to do hatava with others. And that is on a different level. The Semel HaChesed, the story that the Torah uses to teach us the mitzvah of Chesed, the midah of Avram Avinu, who was the Semel HaChesed, 
is Avram Avinu sitting and there's no one there. It's a hot day. And he's sitting Pesach oil, and he's waiting because he has a need to do chesed. It's coming from within him. There's no one there asking, but he needs to do chesed because we need to emulate the Rebbe Nishlalem, and if we can't emulate the Rebbe Nishlalem, there is something lacking within us. And so, Elu Dvarim She'ein Lohem Shir is Gemilas Chasodim on the highest level of Mesiris Nefesh will go to the nth degree. But when we say Elu Dvarim She'ein Lohem Shir, it is also on the lower level. There is nothing that is too small. There is nothing that is insignificant. If we can do the chesed a little bit better, if it could be with a little bit more mesinus, with a little bit more diktuk. I know by us, I can't speak for Toronto, I can't tell you how many times for us to be able to get a Jewish name could be tremendous mysterious nefesh. It's hard, you have to look up family members. People, unfortunately, don't know their name. I know there are shuls. It's something I've been working on now, this little gray pamphlet that we had in there is a Hebrew name. There's a line for a Hebrew name. We've encouraged shuls to have family, to have members of the shuls fill out this form. It has a lot of interesting things on it that are negea, but a Jewish name, it's so painful to call someone that they don't remember the mother's or the father's Jewish name, and if they do, certainly not the grandfather's. We know the Indian of knowing a name. These people had names, we don't know. But to go to the trouble of finding out, tremendous Indian of chesed, to be able to refer to them. There's a minute in some chevers to say to people before they go, Dein Yiddish nomen is given, fages nicht dem Yiddish nomen. We know we say psukim at the end of davening, there's a meaning many people say psukim, they have the, the name in the beginning and the end, the same letters, because a person, lachar misa, is a pachad, if he gets his name, we should remember our name. A Jewish name is a tremendous thing. To get a person's talus, there are an endless amount of things that we can do that are little things that make the mitzvah of chesed shalemis that much greater. Certainly within the process itself, Chesed in this area extends also to many people who don't necessarily understand the need for it. Unfortunately, so many of Klal Yisrael, Atinoike Shenishbu, they're not reaching out for this. They're not even necessarily interested in Kuras Yisrael. And there's an Indian for us to reach out to them, to teach them whether it's extended family members in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world, where maybe there isn't such a strong community like Toronto, to reach out to encourage them to do things kahalacha. We just spent four months fighting a case in New York of a woman who her whole life had wanted to be cremated. And at the very end of her life, she told a nephew who was a Baal Tshuva in Eretz Yisrael that she agrees to be buried. And she, there were other people who she told this to as well. And at the end, she never changed her will. And it became a court case between one side of the family and the other side of the family. I will tell you that one of the G'dayle Hador, when we came to the point where we had to go to court and fight this in court, and we lost Lida. And this woman was not zeichet to Kuras Yisrael. But this Rav, this Rosh Hashiva, this Godel, wrote a check, personally, of $500. I was nishtoimen that here is a Rosh Hashiva, a Godel, writing a check for a woman who, until she was 102, wanted to be cremated. She cremated her husband. But there was a possibility that she could be brought to Kuras Yisrael. And so he felt this was Mesmitzvah, this was Kedai. 
And we fought it, we lost. Bezos Hashem, good things will come from the Mesiris Nefesh that was put into this. But on and on, the Mesiris Nefesh that we have for this mitzvah is outstanding. And it's a zechus for us. There is a Not a coincidence, but there is a need to focus on the fact that the Torah teaches us the halachas of Kavod Hames, the halachas of Kfura, by a person that was a Horuk Bezdin. That's where we, the Torah teaches us the halacha of cover to perennu loy solen of losay ala eights, that halacha is taught by a person who is not the Adam Gadol. And every person in our community is treated exactly the same way. What, you look at Rashi, you look at Chazal, what do they tell us? This person is a tselem elikim, ki kilalas elikim tolui. And to in any way minimize their covet is a zilzulay shalmelech. We masik, we appreciate what that means when we're dealing with someone who is a, upon whom it is said, bonim atem la shemelokechem, whether the tinoke shenishbu, we give them the exact same covet. There are certain halachas that are different. The halachas, you're not macabre tzadik or Russia. Certainly in, in terms of the hespin and the covet they'll get, it'll be different. But in the covet that we treat them as a person, it's exactly the same. There isn't any differentiation. I remember a tahara that we did where this person was covered literally kimat from head to foot in tattoos. I was by far the least learned person in the room. There were three other people who were involved in that tahara, who were people who knew shas. People who, if I mentioned some of the names, I think would be very well recognized. And I'm thinking to myself, here are these chashuvim, giving covered washing a nifter who obviously had no shaykhs to Yiddishkeit. But nevertheless, that's the halacha. And we have the ability, and we have the sensitivity, and we have that drive, and we have that emulation of Allah to Bidrachov to feel the need to do a chesed and to clean the stones of someone who jumped. Because this is Kavra Adam, to tell him Elikim, for Allah to Bidrachov. The truth is, this is a chesed shalemis. We don't expect any reward. And I must say that one of the things that was said to me today about the crowd tonight was extremely inspiring. I was told there are many people here tonight who will be meeting other members of the community whom they never knew were members of a Hever Kadisha because it's done b'tzinah. There is no advertisement. Nobody knows who's involved in the Hever Kadisha. It's unbelievable. It's the way it should be. But it's a tremendous achus and it's a tremendous inspiration. One of the things that we, as Ms. Askin, we who are involved in this mitzvah, have a special achus. And it's a achus that has a lot of application if we want to really use it. We need to focus on it, and we need to use it. There's a Zoyar I saw brought in a new sefer that was put out on the Masilis Yesharim. The Zoyar says, Tochazi Barnash Ozel Bahai Alma, look at this man walking in this earth. He thinks this is his world. He thinks this is his. He's going to be here forever. He's going to be here for generations to come. Chavitz Chaim, we spoke about 
There was a chevra mesim. We have a tendency to think that people who died belong to a club and we never joined. We never will join. This is the makeup, the psychological makeup of man. Shleim HaMelech, the Chacham Adam tells us, there is a tremendous limud in being involved in this mitzvah. It's a limud that teaches us that there is a tafke to life, that life is not forever, and that this is a prize of Bifne Olam Haba. And we have a very special zechus that we can learn to appreciate the value of life if we only focus on it a little bit. And this is not my own observation. There is a, a halach in Shulchan Aruch, it's the last sif in Shin Lamites. It says, Kivan shenata adam lomus, when a person is about to die, in rishon liparid mimenu, you're not allowed to leave. So that the neshama does not go out and he will be left alone. And the Taz on the page says, There is a sense of desolation. There's a sense of shimum. There's a sense of being overwhelmed when a person's neshama leaves. Bishar when a person's neshama leaves, the neshama is in a state of shimon. And if there is someone there, it helps calm them, it helps give them a certain sense of comfort. And the Ramah goes on to say another halacha. And he says, mitzvah, lamoid, it's a mitzvah. It's not just that there's an Easter for you to walk out when a person's about to die, but there's a mitzvah for you, a positive mitzvah for you to be there when a person dies. Because it says, and it quotes the Pasuk and Tehillim and Test that we say in the Beis Ovel, will we live forever and not see the pit? You'll see Chachamim die, Yachar Ksil Vavar Yavedu. Everyone will eventually be lost. And others will take that which they profited, that which they leave behind in this world. So the question that struck me when I was learning this halacha is we understand the first halacha is a halacha in Hilchas Avelus. It's a halacha, you're there person is dying, you're not allowed to leave. It's something that is the need of the nifter. But what is the Ramot telling us here in the middle of Hilchas Avelus that there is a mitzvah lamoid? It's true, it's connected. Put it in Hilchas Tshuva, you want to have inspiration, stay, go. I know Victor Miller used to always say, I heard him many times say, if you want, you're feeling down, go walk past the cemetery, you'll feel good. You'll see there's worse things. It'll give you strength, it'll give you simcha. So you want to be inspired? Go to a hospital ward, go to a hospice program, and you'll be inspired. What's it doing here? And I wanted to say it's my own, I don't know if it's, but I'll say over something that I heard, and I actually saw it in the safe, I was looking today, I couldn't find it, from Rav Shimon Schwab, Zechariah Levracha, who said this at a Zayin Suda. I saw it once in a kundras that was put out of some of his drushes. And he says it's a Gemara in Brachas. The Gemara says that kol haroyes hameis ve'enoi melavehu oiver mishum loyeg l'rash. It's a Gemara in Brachas, I think it's Daf Yud Ches, and the Gemara says that if someone walks by where they're carrying out a mace, and he walks the other way. It's loyeg rush. It's making fun of a rush. Now we know about the mitzvah of loy, the Indian of loyeg rush. 
We don't talk in the Tahara room because of Loyeg Rasha. We are sits us out in front of a maze because of Loyeg Rasha. We're like brachas. We don't daven. All these things are because of the mitzvah of Loyeg Rasha. He can't do this or she can't do this anymore. How could we flaunt our ability to still perform? But you're walking down the street, you're coming out of your house, and there's a funeral home down the block. And you see a mace, they're carrying a mace, and you're going, you turn and you go the other way. What's the Loyeg Rush? How do you understand that? Sir so Schwab explained that there are different expressions of someone who is bereft, someone that doesn't have. There's an Oni, there's an Evian, and one of the way a Dal Rush is that which refers or that which somehow creates a picture of someone who has nothing. A rush ain't coiled, nothing. A rush has nothing. It says the only thing that a mace has is the ability to inspire the living. A mace has the ability to teach the living the value of life. You still have the koyach to accomplish. I no longer have it. It's not going to be there forever. It's not your world, and you're not here forever. It's a world that's a place to accomplish. It's a laboratory for chesed and for avoida and for Torah and for everything else. But it's not forever. If you turn away and you take away from that mace, that ability to inspire you, that's like Lurash. If that's true, then it's a mitzvah on each one of us to be oimed alamei seitzel yesiyash neshama, not for what it does for us only. It's not only in hilchas tshuva, it's in hilchas avelus, it's doing for the mace, it's giving them the zechus of inspiring us, that's what they can do. So it's an inspiration that we are to take, it's an inspiration that gives us Tremendous power to go on. If you know, the first thing a Jew says to invigorate himself every morning is, That's it. That's my inspiration to go on today. Thank you, Rebbe for that. And with that, I have the ability to be an Evan Hashem. So for that, we need to realize that we have this unique opportunity. I'll end with just, I'll end with a very, very beautiful shot that I saw for Shalom Zalman, our box of Kvayn Levrach, and then a story. Nowadays, if you don't tell a story, you, you can't get off the podium, so I'll tell the story. There is something we say in Slichus and Yom Kippur, everyone knows it, the Asara Haruge Malchus, we talk about the Asara Haruge Malchus, and it talks about Rabbi Shmuel Kain Gadol. It's a Shaila who should be killed first, Rabbi Shmuel Kain Gadol, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and the Gadol fellow Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. They took lots, and then Rabbi Shmuel Kain Gadol. It says after Rabbi Shimon Gamliel was killed, he took the head of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, the Tzarach. He shouted. He screamed. The Koil Mar. The kasha is a kasha that struck me years ago. I never really knew a Teretz. I don't even know if I ever asked the kasha. Somehow you think about it as you're going through Yom Kippur. It's a time where you're already very hungry. By the time you come over, you can eat. You forget all about it. But it's a kasha. He was a kayin. How could Rabbi Shmuel Kayin Gadol take the head of the Nasi when he was a kayin Gadol? It's not allowed to be metame. So Rabbi Shleim is Avanach, and this is brought in the Sefer by Dr. Abraham, Nishma Avram. He says that Rabbi Shleim is Auerbach told him that he believes that in order for Rabbi Yishmael Kohen Gadol to be able to take the head of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, he was a captive. They were about to kill him. How could he take the head of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel? Must be that he had to ask. And there was a diyun. And there was discussion, and finally they decided that in their view of how to torture Klal Yisrael and these people, 
it was okay for him to hold the head of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Said Rabbi Shleim Zalman Albach, he bought a few minutes of life, and that's Pikuach Nefesh. And for Pikuach Nefesh, a Kohen Gadol could be Metame. That was his answer. It's a fascinating answer. But for us, think about it. What kind of life are we talking about? Tzorach, the Koil Mar, moments of pain beyond comprehension, knowing he's about to die, but it's a few more minutes of being an Evid Hashem. For us, we have the opportunity to appreciate life on a different level. That's a tremendous zechus. It's a schus for us. It's a schus that shouldn't be minimized. But it's also a schus. It's a chesed that we could do with the mason. They may not be asking for it, but it's another element. It's another dimension of chesed, which is v'halachta bedrochav, which is the work that we do. I'll end with a story. The zechus of the mitzvah that we do is something that I don't begin to claim to know. I have no idea. There are many stories. I'm sure you've all heard stories. I only know that to understand what a little bit of COVID means, what difference does it make? I don't think we can ever quantify what it means. But I'll tell you a story that I saw that even though it's one of the things that's brought down that we Eat all, we, the carrot, we eat only the Paris Boilem Hazen, the Karen Kayemis Boilem Abba. This story is an interesting story. I was in my office one day, and I get a phone call from a man who tells me, Rabbi Zon, my father was just nifter in Parkway Hospital, which no longer exists. They just closed a little while ago in Forest Hills. He says, and I want to make sure that everything is done 100% kahalocha. I was told that you are the Hever Kadisha in Queens. I want to make sure that everything is okay. I said, fine, because Hashem will take care of it. I said, which funeral home do you plan to use? He says he's planning to use Parkside. And Parkside is a funeral home in Forest Hills, about a mile away from this hospital parkway. But I've learned from experience, never let the person off the phone, especially this was probably pre-cell phone days. He may never get back to them. Let me check it out. So I put him on hold, and I called Parkside, and Parkside says, yeah, we received a call about this case, but we're not handling it. I said, what does that mean? He says, the funeral is going to be out of Parkside, but the funeral director that is handling the case is Kirschenbaum in Brooklyn. This man was a member of a Kirschenbaum society, and so they're going to take him from, to Kirschenbaum and they'll bring him here for the Leviathan. So I said, fine. I get back on the phone. I said, this me. You'll have to call the Hever Kadisha in Brooklyn that handles Kirschenbaum. He says, what? They're going to schlep my father from Queens to Brooklyn and bring him back here? What for? Why does he need this for? Why can't they do it? So I said to him, if you want to ask Kirschenbaum, and Kirschenbaum will ask Parkside, I'll put in a good word. We can arrange it. Maybe. So. Five minutes later, it's all done. Parkside's masking. We're bringing him into Parkside. The tire will be done in Parkside. Fine. We very often, we try to do taharas as part of the diktuk and sometimes with Messiris Nefesh as close to the Levaya as possible. But sometimes, especially on certain days, we have only B'nai Torah, Kaila Yungalite, who are in the, in, on the Hevra. So, Certain times we have to do it at night so it doesn't cut into Seder time, whatever it might be. So sometimes we'll do it the night before. But this Tahara we wanted to do the night before because the Levaya was at 9 o'clock and the family was going to be there by 8 o'clock and the funeral home told us we have to be finished by 8 o'clock which would have meant at that time of year that either they wouldn't have davened with a minion or they would have had to cut into Seder time, whatever it was. We were going to do it the night before. Aftzalachas, as they say, there were five women taharas in that funeral home that night. There was no way that we could get into the tahara room. So we scheduled it for very early. We davened that was for the very early minute that we found. 
and we got to the funeral home in the morning to do this tahara. I walk in, and we start the tahara, and I open the set of tachrichim. This man had his own set of tachrichim. In fact, the son told me he has a set of tachrichim. Sometimes people bring a kittle, they think it's a set of tachrichim. But he says, no, no, this is, I know it's a good set. He, I opened it up, and if I could tell you that it was the most beautiful set of tachrichim I ever saw in my life, you'd probably, you who know what a tachrichim are, wonder, what is a beautiful set of tachrichim? Does it have an alligator on it? What, what exactly is this? What is a beautiful set of tachrichim? I mean, how do you get it? These tachrichim were made of the finest linen you could possibly imagine. It was made of white, beautiful linen. On top of that, the bendlach, the bands that go through all the begodim, instead of being a piece of material that's flipped over and the bendel goes through the, that opening, there were diamond-shaped cutouts along the entire begod that were exactly the same size, obviously done by hand, and the gartel was woven through these diamond shapes. It's just, I've never seen, not only that, but it was all the, all the bendlach, all the knots were tied in the box at the place where they're supposed to be tied with, with bows. It, it, was, it was magnificent. I never saw anything like this. As I'm opening the bendel for the kittel, the bendel tears off. And I must tell you that I felt terrible because here are these beautiful tachrichim. But on top of that, I felt like I just got a patch. A few weeks prior to this, I was giving a shear to the women in my own Hever Kedisha. And they asked me a shayla. I said, Rabbi Zon, what happens if you're doing a tahara on a case where there is linen tachrichim, and one of the benlach tears off, and you need to sew it back on. Do you have to use linen thread, or can you use any white thread? It's an interesting shiloh, and the answer is that you have to use linen thread. But at that time, being a lot younger, and maybe not as sensitive as I am today, I left. I said, yeah, I guess the women would do that. They would sew it back on. With us, we figure out a way, because we, we fit it in, we tie it on, we, we make a, and we put it back, and that's what we do. We, we, we have thread to, to sew it on. It happens a mole once, uh, yeah, once out of a hundred times. So here, I tear the set of tachrichim that is beautiful, and I'm saying to myself, Oy, how could you be so insensitive? Because right now, I wanted to be able to be masak in this avl. So I'm standing there deep in thought, feeling absolutely terrible. One of the other metarim is waiting for the tachrichim, and he comes out, and he says, what's going on? I said to him, Shaya, look at these tachrichim. You've never seen anything like this. And look what I just did. I pulled it, and I tore it. Zohanan, take a look. In the kittle was a needle threaded with linen thread. <laughs> Could you be massive? I'm not a very uh, adept at sewing, but I sewed that bendel on. I didn't have to make knots, no knots. I went over it a few times, and we finished the tahara. I want you to know I was extremely moved, and suddenly I realized here is a man who calls me from Parkway Hospital. He told me a nurse gave him my number. I never heard of this nurse before or after. I don't know who she was. And he's supposed to go to Brooklyn. He ends up in Queens. The tower is supposed to be at night. It ends up in the morning. There's a kittle. There's a... Everything started for us. I had no idea what's going on here. I mean, the guy didn't sound like anyone. It didn't sound like a, a Rashka Bahag. I went, I took this needle. It was early morning. As I told you, we finished the Tahara. The family was already there partially because it took time to sew this and all that, and I went upstairs and I gave this needle to the son. I said to him, keep this as a memento. I have no idea who your father was, but he must have been a special person. So he said to me, my father was a simple Jew, was a good Jew. He said he was, came to America as a young boy and he kept Shabbos 
and he davened three times a day. He was not a simple Jew by any means. But he said the one love of his life, the thing that meant more to him than anything else was that he and his sister founded the Hever Kaddish in Jamaica. And this was what they devoted their life to. And his sister sowed these tachrichim as an act of love. Avas chesed. As I'll say, beautiful tachrichim is moira on the fact that we believe in tchiyas hamesim. To do, the, to, to be able to see, you see, first of all, to, first of all, you see the love that people show for mitzvah. But you see how the midah connected, midah works, how the covet came back to him. I mean, the Gemara speaks about midah connected, midah, and I'll end with this. Moshe Rabbeinu took care of Yosef, took care of Yaakov. Yosef was the greatest of the sons, took care of Yaakov. Moshe was, uh, Yosef took care of Yaakov. Who took care of Yosef? Moshe Rabbeinu. There's no one greater than Moshe Rabbeinu. Who took care of Moshe Rabbeinu? The Rabbeinu Shalom himself. And that's why we're here on Zion Adar. The day that the Rabbeinu Shalom took care of this mitzvah and showed the meat of Kineged Mida showed the zechus of what it means to be metapel in this mitzvah be'emuna. And Taka showed us that this is the derech, the midah of the Rebbeinu Shalom that we can emulate. So let's take this chesed that we have. Let's use it. Let's use it to emulate the derech Hashem. To be v'halachta bedrochav in every way possible. To do it bedikduk, to do it with avas chesed to take the lessons for ourselves, which will be another chesed. And that schus will be zaycheh. That just as today was the day that the Hever Kaddisha didn't have to do any work because the Rebbeinu Shalom did the work, which is another reason for Zayin Adar. We should talk about zaycheh that the Rebbeinu Shalom should put us out of business. Like the Mishnah that we read before, we should end with Bila Amavis Lonetzach, Mocha Hashem Alekim Dimon Me'al Kalpon, and we should be zaycheh to the Gula Shleim of the Meher Amen.